social activism is one of the things I do, I am. I can't avoid it for some reason. There's a certain feeling of satisfaction that you've contributed to your country a billion dollars every five years, you know. I started out life working on a poultry farm. I basically was born in a natural environment and that has become my life. When I came out of Henderson High School and the testimonial they gave me said, uh, we hope he breaks many swords in journalism. And so the first thing I did on leaving school was go to the Auckland Star. I was trained as a scientist. I spent 20 years really with uh, Federated Mountain Clubs. We ran courses run by the clubs themselves so that they could train up their own people and make sure that they understood the risks they run in the outdoors. My interest in nursery work probably started when my father, who was interested in trees, used to go and visit a nursery owned by Jack Clark, who was responsible for creating Eden Garden with Sir Frank Mappin. I eventually then became a nurseryman, where I was able to travel all over New Zealand collecting seed material. Well, my parents both belonged to the Auckland Tramping Club, and we were taken out on various trips into the Waitakris, and also the Hanuas, and also down to Mount Ruapehu and places like that. Often the sort of people I was attracted to were people who were doing social justice type work. And the reason for that is that the grandfather was a very prominent figure in both religion and in the conscription fights for the First World War. So the family was very proud of that and that percolated through to most of us who were kids. Wow, you know, we stand up for the right. That's the sort of thing that I think formed my core. 1969, the government decided to break up various government agencies into groups that could be privatised and to go out and fend for themselves as against uh, the Department of Conservation, which was an organisation that was there to manage the native forest and they weren't always that interested in doing what they should have been doing. So we found a way of working with government departmental people and we were able to argue in many cases that DOC should have been more aggressive in what it was doing. As a result of that, a significant amount of land did come to conservation. So social activism includes getting distressed about seeing a whole lot of unemployment in your country. Now, I'd already talked to an American friend of mine who was suggesting all sorts of work schemes, and he suggested the trail as one thing that could be done. And I thought, yes, absolutely, that can be done. So because I was in a position of power as a journalist, I wrote up a whole blueprint for doing a trail which would be a patriotic act, if you like. The Te Araroa Trail, a continuous walking route from Cape Reinga to Bluff, 3,000 kilometres. No one had thought that possible. In fact, there had been a New Zealand Walking Commission that had failed abysmally. For some reason, I did get through. I designed that trail. I named it Te Araroa, the long pathway. At the time I was working in the laboratory at New Zealand Breweries, which was the most fantastic job, but I realised I'd never see my children if I was working in industry. So I decided to start my own native plant business, which was one of the greatest decisions I ever made. First things we did was experiment with potting mixes and of course composting the pine bark was an essential step in getting it properly prepared. You'll never grow anything in that rubbish, I was told. Um, quickly proved to be wrong and it is now a multi-million dollar industry. The nursery attracted a lot of people which then grew until today 
it's international. I was invited, for example, to the Chinese Academy of Sciences 80th birthday and I was the only person from the Southern Hemisphere there. That was because I was well known. I wrote a book about my adventurous trek down the trail and Ed Hillary was on board as a trustee and I gave him the book said, look, I'd like your recommendation on the back of this book. And then he read it and said, yeah, yeah, it's a great book. It's a great adventure. And as I was leaving, Ed lifts up his hand and says, and I know, Jeff, that you won't give up until this trail is open, will you, Jeff? And to me, that was like taking a pledge from one of New Zealand's most beloved figures. The Te Araroa Trail is my legacy. From what I remember on my days in Henderson High School, uh, the teachers were really keen to get us to learn and uh, they'd ask us questions. If you met them in the corridor, and that was really great because you thought, I better remember this and know what I'm doing. Well, Henderson High School was a very enjoyable time. High school, I was in a class called Three Husbandry, which was run by a teacher called Dick Barton. He was a great inspiration. I was in Henderson High School from 1958 to 1962, from memory. Came out of the primary system, got to the big school. So suddenly, from being the man at Henderson Primary School, there I am amongst a sea of people that I don't really know, and getting the first foothold on secondary or tertiary studies. I think many people out of school, there's one teacher who you bond with. I bonded with Noel Woods, who was the English teacher. And he used to read my essays to the class saying, look, you know, you should see what this guy's written. You know, it's great read it out, think that writing is powerful. The most important lesson anybody can learn at school is actually learning to learn. The most boring person you'll ever meet on this planet is yourself and you've got to find interest in the world and make sure that you develop a passion that is you. My advice would be to get involved in important issues, to do what you can to A, understand them, and B, to advocate for them. It is really important that you get out there and learn from the experience of doing it, because you won't always succeed, uh, but you can try again. You put your shoulder to the wheel and push hard enough and long enough, you can get there, it can come true. And so you look around you and be proud of the fact that the pebble you threw into the water, the ripple spread and something was achieved.